It's time to talk tennis now on the Sports Max Zone. And history was created at the Eric Bell Tennis Centre in Kingston on Sunday as Jamaica secured a place in the World Group 2 of the Davis Cup for the first time ever. Here's Khadija Bryan with a look at how the Jamaicans got the better of Estonia. Coming from a two-love lead on Saturday, Jamaica maintained their dominance on the court to seal a 3-2 win over visitors Estonia in the Davis Cup on Sunday. On day one at the Eric Bell National Tennis Center, Estonia had to settle for a double defeat after Jamaica's Roland Phillips thrashed Christian Tam 6-1, 6-1 and Blaise Bicknell defeated Kenneth Reisma 4-6, 6-4 and 6-love. On day two, the visitors managed to rebound in the first match when the doubles team of Kenneth Reisma and Jürgen and Zop defeated one. John Chin and Daniel Azar in straight sets 6-1, 6-1. Their victory didn't last for long, however, as in the first set of his match against Blaise Bicknell, Christian Tam threw his racket and hit the center line judge out of frustration, giving Jamaica an automatic third win of the tournament. The Jamaicans have made history in advancing to the World Group 2 of the Davis Cup for the first time. Blaise Bicknell says the victory means a lot to the team. Well, yeah, as you said, it's just history. It's history for Jamaican tennis. I mean... We've, we've dreamt about this for, for so long, we've never made it this far in the Davis Cup, so it just feels incredible. Athletic trainer for the Jamaican team, Chris Paul, says the bitter defeat in Greece last year prepared his team for the victory in the Davis Cup. Well, for us, um, I remember last year in Greece, I sat on the, I sat on the court and watched Br Greece celebrate and I soaked it all in and I told him this will never happen to us again. If we ever have a chance to win, we are going to definitely find a way. All the Zoom sessions, all the running the hills, all the beach training, it's just for this moment. And um, it's great to be here and just like soak it up with the fans. Like I said, last year in Greece, it was so bitter for us that I soaked it all in and I promised myself as long as I'm the trainer, we would never lose in this situation again. The final score is at the end of the two days saw Jamaica winning 3-2 against Estonia. Well, President of Tennis Jamaica, John Azar, joins us now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you. Are you pleased with how everything turned out this weekend? I'm very pleased. I mean, the result was the icing on the cake, of course. It, um, all credit to the team. But it, it's rare that you conceptualize something, plan something in terms of the event, and it turns out not only as good as you hope, but even even better. So from that perspective, I think it was fantastic as well. Yeah, and our Sportsmax team was hard at work. Of course, you know, we brought the best of the action to our viewers across the Caribbean and the world by extension. Um, were you pleased well, with the coverage? I know I'm not allowed to plug brands here on set, but I'm going to make an exception. The For Sports, Sportsmax. The, the Sportsmax <laughs> team was incredible, led by Mr. Ricardo Chambers in commentary, I thought. His commentary was first world. I thought the production was exceptional. And from that perspective as well, I think last night was the first I got the chance to sit back and watch a feed. And I was blown away. It was like watching coverage anywhere. So definitely no complaints there. John, you don't have to butter me up, you know. I, I, I won't bowl you too many bouncers. It's okay. Just a few swinging deliveries and a few aces here and there. I'm not sure you're capable of bowling bouncers, but let's keep the talk on tennis. You only want to keep it civil. Let's keep it on ten tennis <laughs> yes, related. Yes, let's keep it on tennis. <laughs> yeah, um, fabulous weekend, right? You've had some time to sit and think about it now in terms of everything that you achieved from the organization of the event to the result, um, the Jamaicans coming out on top to the crowd. You had a world and Olympic champion watching on. Shelley and Fraser Price was there on the second day as president. How does it feel um, to put together something that the tennis fraternity, in truth, has never seen here? It's a very proud feeling. I mean, I'll tell you, you know, that term when people say you, you soak something up, I've never really gotten it as much as yesterday. Yeah. After the last match, I went out on the court, I looked around, looked at the fans, looked at the players who were still mulling around, and literally I, I took a couple of seconds to just soak it all in. It, it was mm -hmm. a good feeling. I never realized before, I'll be frank with you, I attend international events, take a lot for granted in terms of everything just seems to happen. 
But when your partner you have to do the work. It, yeah, when your partner <laughs> plan it and see the attention, the detail that's required is a totally different thing. But as I said, very proud, proud moment for the tennis make and the entire team. Yeah. And the players, talk to us about what happened out there on court because the Jamaicans importantly took that early lead on day one going up too loud. There was a point when um, Blaise Bicknell seemed in a spot of bother against <gasps> Kenneth Reisma, um, but he managed to turn that around. And, and that 2-0 lead, how important was it, um, especially because we had the experience of Greece last year? Yeah, I think, well, firstly, I think that Randy Phillips set the tone for the weekend. I think that his first match was great. You know, the home crowd can either affect you negatively or you can feed off the energy. He set the tone, as you say, Blaze wobbled a bit in the beginning, but once he won that second set, I think we all knew he was on track. And yeah, going up too love, we knew the work wasn't over, but certainly we felt good going into day two um, that we're going to be able to close it out, which is something that we came up just short of in Greece uh, March last year. Yeah, and because the entire event was successful as the president, do you feel motivated and you know encouraged now to have other competitions um, at this level for tennis in Jamaica? Yeah, I certainly hope that we have a nice blueprint here. Now, there's I think that it will set the tone for other international tennis events we can host. From all accounts, including the ITF reports and so forth, the event was a resounding success. Fans came out in their numbers. And definitely, I think that this is the start of what we're going to see with international tennis events being hosted here in Jamaica. So certainly, yes. And feedback from just like the regular fan, I'm sure they would have spoken to you. What have they, they been saying? Um, <laughs> it's been overwhelming. I think generally speaking, everybody was, was super, super happy. And I think truthfully, people were very surprised. I mean, somebody like Ricardo, who knows the venue well, mm -hmm. when it was announced for hosting at that facility, Persons may have been a bit skeptical for a number of reasons, but the venue was transformed. It really, as I said, I don't want you necessarily hearing it from me. Yeah, well, we but did speak was, to you and you were doing was, work. Yeah, <laughs> but it was transformed into something that people who had even seen it a week before, weeks before, went in and were, were literally blown away. So thank God, credit, credit to the entire team. Yeah, fantastic. It really was fantastic. Initially, when I saw it, we covered the Commonwealth Games last year in Birmingham. And when I walked into the venue with my videographer, which was about two days before, um, and he said to me, this reminds me of the NEC. That's one of the venues um, at the, the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. So it spoke volumes um, to what we were looking at. But where do we go from here? So we're in group two now. What happens? Well, before I tell you that, the ITF referee on the night before the tie walked out, looked at the banners on the venue and told me he felt like he was at the ATP Dubai event. And that's wow. a big compliment. Massive. That's a big yeah. compliment. Yeah. So where do we go from here? The draw for the Group 2 will be held this week, Thursday, in London. Um, we'll know at the end of Thursday who we're playing. And then, God's willing, shortly thereafter, we'll know if it's a home or a way tie. So the competition is only going to get tougher from here. Mm -hmm. But that being said, our guys are... Uh, good team. I think they know what's required of them and what they're going to put in the work. So while the competition will get tougher, I've always said we're not getting into group two just to make up numbers. God's willing to getting there to make an impact and nothing has changed in that regard. I'm going to move away from um, the, the kick serve and try one of those flat ones out wide. Um, the officiating, I have to bring this up. There was one particular call um, it was in the match between Blaise Bicknell and Kenneth Reisma. Um, the ball was hit down the tee. Um, he was serving on the do side. Um, the ball was in the middle of the ad side, and the ball was called in. Um, now, there were other contentious calls, which you will get in tennis all the time. Um, and I asked this question not just against the background of what would have happened at Davis Cup, but uh, as a general understanding of what happens in our sport, um, locally and personally, I think, oh, there, there, there it is. That was called in. That, that serve that you just saw, if we could see it again, um, Kenneth Reisman could not believe it that this was called in. Here's, a, here's another look at it. Yeah, that serve was called in. Um, I've never seen anything as, as, as bad as that, um, John. But yes, and as I said, just generally, I feel the officiating has to improve. From, from your standpoint, how do you see it? How do we improve it? 
I agree with you fully. But before getting into officiating, what surprised me was that call wasn't overruled by the umpire. Oh, it shocked me too. And but, by the way, the, the, the chair umpire is a neutral umpire. Well, the chair umpire is from overseas, yes. supplied yeah. by the ITF. Yes. So while you may expect the odd error from a lines person, for a chair umpire, and I'm not being critical of the system necessarily, for a chair umpire to, to miss that call yeah. is, is that shocking. Yes. But to your bigger question, I definitely agree that our officiating across the board needs to improve. We now have Mr. Tanias Cannon, an ITF white badge referee, stationed in Jamaica working with Tennis Jamaica. One of the many things that he is doing and tasked to do is to have an officiating course to recertify our existing officials, but as importantly, to get a new cadre of officials certified both for local events and international events like this. Yeah. So certainly I agree with you. One quick comment on the officiating, if I could, well, a little bit. Yeah. I was asked earlier about the unsportsmanlike behavior of the Estonian team. Yeah. I, from my perspective, I think the Estonian team was fantastic. I think their, sportsman, their sportsmanship throughout the event was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. There was one isolated incident at the end, clearly a rash. Um, moment of indiscretion, but the Estonia team generally, I don't think that was indicative of who they were. Yeah. Each member came over and apologized to me personally, I apologized to our guys. So, I mean, yeah. I don't want that one incident to mar what was otherwise a fantastic display and they're great guys. I mean, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately in sport, you have to have a win and a loser. Yeah. But yeah, and, and thankfully from our standpoint, it was Jamaica that won. I have to make a quick comment. I know we're up on a break. But congratulations as well to Barbados because they're back in Group 2. Um, they beat uh, Pacific Oceania by three matches to two. Really superb performance as well because they were down 2-1 in that tie. And in the deciding match, the 20-year-old Kaipa Marshall um, was down a set and 5-4. His opponent, uh, Clement Main Guy, was serving for the match. He broke at 5-4, won the set 7-5, lost his serve early in the third, but still managed to go on and win 6-3 um, in the third. It was a marvelous performance. And if you thought it was scintillating um, and thrilling in Kingston, it was just as good in Bridgetown Barbados as well. Yeah, well, John, we want to thank you so much. And although the Davis Cup is done, don't be a stranger to the Sportsmax zone. We'll chat again when something big is happening. I'll never turn down your invitation. Maybe I'll turn down his, but yeah. never yours. Well, thanks. <laughs> Looking forward to chatting again thank soon. You again. We're up on a break, thank so we'll be right back. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment.